Hello YouTube, D. Badger here. So this is a spot weld shear. Um, Mr. Snippy uh, spot weld um, slicer, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. Haven't really given it a clever name yet. Um, yeah, kind of like Mr. Snippy just because it's amusing. Anyway, um, I found a video on YouTube uh, where some Asian guy made something very similar to this and I when as soon as I saw the video and realized what it did I was like oh damn I need one of those like ASAP because I do a lot of 18650 and 21700 cell recovery uh, you know I'll, I'll take apart a pack from something else get all the cells out so I'll have a bunch of cells and these ones are cleaned up or sort of cleaned up um, and then I'll spend a lot of time uh, using uh, flush cutters to clean off as much of the old spot welds as possible. And, well, this does a far superior job than uh, flush cutters ever will. And I'll show you this cell here in a second. But first of all, let me talk about uh, what this thing is. So this is a cradle, so, you know, your battery can sit in there. And you basically butt it up against the blade, which is right here. And that's a 100 millimeter linear rail that I've ground a rather razor sharp edge on it and then hardened this end of it and quenched it. Um, but anyway, you can see on this cell that there are spot welds on there. And this is a cell that I cleaned up with flush cutters. So I'd consider that to be pretty good. And yeah, you can see the welds on the bottom of there too. But uh, yeah, I would, I've would i used hundreds and hundreds of cells cleaned up to this level. And now I'm not going to because I'm going to use them like this cleans up and I'll show that in a little bit. Um, so there is a couple tricks to this thing, if you want to call them that. So my little uh, V block here, I just mean machine mine out of a solid block of aluminum. Um, but uh, you can see how it is raised up a couple degrees. And basically what that does is give you a little bit of angle of attack on the edge of that blade. And I guarantee if I put my finger underneath there and I turn that pot, it would slice the end of my finger off. It has got plenty of power. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, and it's razor sharp, too. It'll definitely, that little uh, edge on there is right now just r wicked sharp. So, yeah, don't stick your finger underneath there and turn it off because it'll take it off. Uh, won't even stop. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, the, the bottom of a cell is pretty easy. You just kind of slide it in, uh, push it into the blade a little bit, and turn the knob. That's it. The top is a little bit harder because you need to register on the top of the button with the edge of the blade. And then push in a little bit and turn the knob. But other than that, it's that's it. <laughs> that's literally everything. Um, I tend to push the cell in and then look over on this side to see where I'm oriented uh, while I'm turning the pot to make sure I'm in the right spot. But uh, that's probably something that I'll figure out and do by feel after a while. Anyway, yeah, it, it absolutely works. Uh, all the parts here were purchased on Amazon. Um, the most expensive thing was a servo and the uh, one in the video, uh, I forget what model that was, but I got, oh, come on camera, focus. Anyway, I got the ASME 04B. Um, and basically the reason why is because it's 380 kilograms per centimeter squared, centimeter squared, whereas the one in the video was 260. And I figured, you know, a bigger servo, it's gonna last longer, even though I don't really need the power. Uh, I'm doing it because like the internal gears, motor, all that kind of stuff are gonna be beefier. And so it's going to definitely uh, last a lot longer. So, uh, you, you know, the extra torque that produces probably isn't really that critical. The one in the video uh, that the uh, Asian guy did, his seems to, like, you know, slow down a little bit um, on bigger welds. And, well, mine doesn't. I can tell you that much. So the extra power is definitely a good thing to have. But uh, it's also going to mean that the servo is going to last a lot longer. And that's the big expensive part. Um, this little adapter disc, if you just look on Amazon for ASME, uh, adapter disc, you'll find them, and they were like $12. Um, you know, the, the servo I think was 60. Uh, this little linear rail, which is 100 millimeters long, um, that uh, cost me $7, $8, I think. Um, it's, yeah, like I said, 100 millimeters long. Nothing really special about it. I've got an M4 screw going through that into this little piece of steel right here, and that's my, whoops, my rod that the, uh, that the adapter wheel goes into. And as you can see, I've cut a slot in the adapter wheel. So nothing really special about that. Uh, you know, that totally works. <laughs> That's the important thing. You know, I didn't have to didn't have to weld anything, and I can weld, or I didn't have to machine anything else. Just, you know, cut a slot in there, uh, open it up a little bit with a file, uh, and that's it. Piece of cake. Um, this is all just uh, half-inch thick aluminum, probably overkill. 
you know, my little block down here, that's, you know, you can see that's stood up a little bit, a couple degrees, so you get a little bit of angle of attack on the blade. Uh, you don't see this in the video per se. It's in there, but you have to be looking for it. Uh, and basically what that does is if you go straight into the cell, or straight into the blade rather with the cell, uh, you don't get any angle attack on the edge of the blade. So you're just basically like tilting it up just a skosh so that the blade bites into the welds a little bit. And then it chops them right off. So yeah, what, when I uh, made this little uh, cradle, um, you know, it's square, uh, so yeah, that didn't get any angle of attack and so I just put some washers on the front edge just to raise it up two degrees. That fixed that problem. Um, the, uh, the whole thing is half inch aluminum. This is overkill. Uh, the one that guy made in the video, his had little angle brackets and I think his base was wood. Um, whereas mine's all aluminum, so mine's going to outlast his. And then I've got six M5 screws, which thread up about into here, <laughs> into this aluminum. So lots and lots of threads for those guys. Uh, yeah, this uh, probably is never going to come apart. You know, unless I take it apart, and it's certainly probably never going to pull apart. On the uh, servo itself, uh, let's kind of prop that up right here. So I've got these two little... Uh, trimmer pots. So this one here is kind of centering, so it's kind of like a fine adjust for center. You're probably useful for like robotics or something like that, for something like this. The the potentiometer or, you know, a, a little s servo tester is going to be fine. Uh, this lower one down here, I do say this one's important though. Um, that's kind of like acceleration. The, uh, the servo motor doesn't just spin up to full speed right away with it turned all the way down. Which if you turn it all the way up, it does. Just like it immediately turns on full speed. So anyway, you get better control with it turned down a good bit. Uh, this red jumper right here, this is the pot position uh, put over here. And that is the RC or servo tester position. Um, I didn't like the way the thing worked with the servo tester. And I tried two servo testers. Uh, and, I both, and I got the same result with both of them. It, it's uh, kind of juddery, stuttery kind of a thing, whereas with just a regular 10K pot, it's perfectly smooth. So um, I have other ideas that I want to try out with a pot anyway. Um, so yeah, pot worked out super well for me. Uh, this jumper right here, so one millisecond that direction, uh, two millisecond this direction. I can't really say that there's a difference one or the other. Um, it seemed to feel a little bit better in two milliseconds. That's about all I can really say about that one. This jumper right here, uh, it's labeled FR, forward reverse maybe. I don't know, I haven't messed with it. <laughs> don't care. The uh, Everything was working the direction I wanted, so I didn't care. Uh, over here, uh, right there is the three pins for the servo. Uh, this little red jumper right there, that basically connects or disconnects five volts to the pot or to the servo. So you unjump right and you don't have power, five volts, anything. Uh, here's the position sensor for the whole thing. That's pretty much everything there. Here's 24 volts in. Uh, there's just a 24 volt, uh, you know, switching power supply, nothing real special there. Uh, you do get more power with higher voltage than you do with lower voltage. So, I went with 24 rather than 12. Anyway, yeah, uh, totally works. So let me show you a cell, or two, again. So this one here, you can see the nubbins on the bottom of it. Flip it over. See the nubbins on there as well. Yeah, there we go. See them? And the top and the bottom of the cell are quite rough to the touch. Because, you know, those welds are... They stick up. Anyway, those were trimmed off with uh, flush cutters. With really close flush cutters. And that's as good as I can get them. Anyway, I've used lots and lots of uh, recovered cells this way and spot weld them. And it's okay, but I now have this, which is way better. Uh, you know, that's trimmed up with flush cutters. In fact, you know, there's several cells that are trimmed up with flush cutters. So this is an LG MH1 that uh, was like those ones. And then I ran it through here. And wow, this is a huge improvement. I don't know how that shows up on camera. But to, to touch, that is completely smooth. There is no bumps, depressions, anything. You can see where the metal is kind of discolored from where the four spots are. But that's pretty much it. It's otherwise perfectly flat like a brand new cell. And the positive end, so this one's a little bit trickier to cut, but uh, still not too bad. Yeah, if I can get this to kind of reflect in the light a little bit, you can sort of see, there we go, you can kind of see in there. Anyway, uh, yeah, the four little welds are there. There is a little tiny bit of a high spot on one of them uh, that I can just feel with my finger, but uh, un unlike this, which, which is rough and it grabs my skin, 
uh, this is very smooth <laughs> by comparison. I mean, really smooth. Yeah, I can, I can just catch the end of my fingernail on that one little weld that still sticks up. The uh, positive post, or the button end, which may or may not be positive, um, that end's a little bit trickier to uh, snip off the welds, uh, just because you need to, you know, lower the blade to the point where it's sitting on the edge of the button, and then you can slice. Um, whereas, like, on the back end, you've got a much larger area that you can you know, register on before you start slicing. So, yeah, this one you got to be a little bit more careful about making sure you get on the cell. So, pretty much the way I'm using it uh, so far. And, you know, I'm an expert because I just built it. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put this cell in and I'll kind of butt it up against the blade. And then I'll look through this side over here uh, to see where I've got the cell or the blade height, things like that. Um, because it's quite possible that I've had the blade high enough and that I could cut off the top of that cell with the thing. It's got plenty of power, so I can definitely do that. And if I stuck my finger in there and turned the, the servo or the pot, yeah, it would chop off your finger. <laughs> it's got plenty of power. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is absolutely brilliant. Just perfect as can be. Um, the, uh, the end of my linear uh, rail here, I did heat that up and quench in water to harden it. Uh, I ground an angle on it um, on my... Uh, on my drill press, so I clamped this up in a machinist vise and then spun a uh, a grinding stone over the thing to get the angle and then it came back over it again with a diamond disc and so yeah, now I've got a wicked sharp edge on there uh, I don't know how long that'll last because uh, you know, that's just uh, it's kind of semi-hard steel that I've kind of hardened a little bit more with quenching <laughs> but uh, yeah, totally works the way it is I probably could have made this shorter it's got an M4 screw going into linear rail and threaded into this piece I really don't need this much length, but it's not in the way uh, or anything, so who cares? Anyway, uh, for people that recover cells, all I can say is, dudes, you need to build yourself one of these things. This is brilliant. Love it. I've had it built now for hours at most and really only trimmed one cell so far, and these results are just absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, anybody who recovers 18650s, 21700s, 26650s, whatever you recover in cylindrical cells, make yourself one of these things. This is super cool. I'm going to probably do, for sure, one change. Uh, so, this is all aluminum. It's all bolted together. You know, if I was, if I had a cell that was really badly skinned up, and I stuck it in here, and I chopped the welds off the front end of it, um, it is very possible that I could create a short between the cradle and the blade and, you know, create a dead short. So, uh, yeah, I want to put, uh, like PET across this foam or something like that to, you know, act as an electrical insulator from the positive to the shell or the can of the battery and all this stuff. The other thing I want to do is this angle on this pot is, well, too much. Well, as you can see, I can turn the servo way further than I need. If I go the other direction, yeah, there we go. That's bottomed out. You never need to bottom out. Like right about there. Whoops, a little bit too much. So that's like absolutely as low as you'd need to go. <laughs> and you don't even need to go that low. So I need a way to stop this pot from turning further than that. And the way I will do that is I will use a couple trimmer pots on either side of this pot to create a dead band down here and a dead band up here so that this... Um, adapter disc only turns a small amount, i.e. there to basically there. Anyway, yeah, a couple of details to work out yet that will just make the thing a little bit more intuitive. Otherwise, yeah, I, I'm super thrilled with the thing. Everybody who recovers cells, you should make one of these.